They get down 2-0 early. Severino looks like he's going to have one of these miserable postseason starts. He settles in. He gets better. They bounce right back, score some runs. We said the Brewers are going to score, but what type of Mets offense was going to show up? The best one did yesterday. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? You know, I got to say, it was also at the perfect time of day. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was great. You know, you're done by 730. Everything's good. You sit, settled in, watch the VP debate and all that other stuff. But I have to say, here's one thing that is probably hidden, although for us Met fans who can appreciate what happened yesterday, maybe it's not so hidden. One of the things that happened yesterday, and I know it's frustrating for the player that I'm going to talk about, but the player did exactly what he had to do, and that is Pete Alonso. They don't want to pitch to him. So, you know, you can imagine how much pent-up frustration he probably has. Like he wants to hit home runs. And, you know, if you told me that both he and Francisco Lindor, and I think Lindor went hitless as well, and the Mets were going to put up eight runs, I would tell you that's exactly – the kind of thing that you want to have happen with no home runs, right? Right. Way. Eventually, they're going to get going, right? Yeah. They will. Uh, hopefully, they'll they'll get going and things are going to be going well. But you know, he walks three times, and now all of a sudden, Vientos comes up. All the guys behind him come up. Uh, J.D. Martinez comes up. Uh, I, I mean, and they get hits and they keep moving the you know the uh, the batting order, and and that's exactly what you want. As much as I want Pete Alonso hitting home runs and knocking runs in. If they're not going to pitch to him and he's going to take three walks and the guys behind him are going to come through, then I'm I'm totally good with that. And I was I, I saw I felt like it yesterday Pete Alonso was very disciplined. Let's put it that way. And that was a big that's a part of what's going on here because other players are stepping up. And I can't reiterate just how out of the not that the bets are lucky, but the the performance that they're getting out of the anthos. Again. Yeah, I mean, how about everybody that <laughs> contributed? You get, I mean, you could pick out any number of guys yesterday that got big hits in big situations. I mean, from the, you know, the Iglesias diving and getting to first base and keeping that inning going from J.D. Martinez coming up after how much he was been slumping the last several weeks and to fight off a pitch and get that. It was as they say, death by a thousand paper cuts. What they were doing is it gets that, shoots that single out into right field. If it was Jesse Winker's two-run triple, I mean, this is, you know, if you're going to win in the postseason, we've seen the opposite with the Yankees for years in the playoffs where their offense goes silent. If you're going to win, you got to get contributions from one through nine. You have to. You cannot have that black hole at the bottom of the lineup. And the Mets certainly did not. You mentioned how Alonzo and Lindor both didn't have offensive days. They didn't hit a home run, and they still scored eight runs. I mean, that 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 right there shows you that that they've got – they can win all sorts of ways. Well, and, yeah, and the other thing, too, is a Luis Severino. Uh, as <laughs> You know, as we're sitting there watching the first inning, like, uh-oh, this yeah. is not going to be good. Um, but he finally settled down, and Jose Buto was great. And, you know, the the – they're set up now. They have their, they have their their pitching rotation set up. They have um, their bullpen set up. They 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 just are in the right place at the right time with the right set of circumstances surrounding them. Now, if they can win today, that would be awesome. Get a couple days rest, and boom, here we go to Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> that would be amazing. And you're right, it is all set up, but it never always works out that way. I mean, you would have thought that that this game yesterday would have been all set up for the Brewers, and they jump on the Mets two nothing. And of course, the Mets come back and beat them. But you're right. I mean, you've got Manaya on the mound. You've got Maton and Diaz who didn't pitch yesterday. You've got the one zero lead in the series. You're right. This is the, you. You got to go get it. I mean, you do not want to go into that game three with everything being lined up the way that it is, especially on the road in Milwaukee after them winning a game. So, I mean, this even though it's not an elimination game today, it almost feels like it is because you want to get this one. So, in Glacius and Taylor, uh, David Stern's guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, again, coming through, and uh, all, all you could say is that you know they're pressing all the right buttons and. You know, if they're going to hit the way they're hitting and they're going to come up with timely hits the way that they have, especially in, you know, in game one, obviously, in the eighth and ninth inning, and then yesterday, the way that it, it kind of unfolded after getting down 2 uh, you know, a lot of people like are posting at us, you and me, and I'm sure they're doing it to Al as well, that there's something special about this team, there's something special about this team. Maybe there really is something special about this team. And 
It's only game one, but it's an, it was an impressive game one. It was an impressive performance. And the fact that Luis Severino found his, found his pitching mo mojo the last, I think, four, five, and six, those innings, he, was, he found his way back into the game, if you will. And um, I, I got to say, they, they played, with the exception of one miscue out in center field, uh, where I felt like, oh, here we go with the Brewers. They're going to remind me of the 2015 Kansas City Royals. It was the Mets who did a lot of the great base running and the Inglesias dive into first base, although they say never do that. Yeah. Uh, that time, I think that it actually did give him an opportunity to be safe at first. And that's the kind of thing that you love to see as a fan. Yeah, well, of, of course, especially from, a, I mean, a guy's been doing it all year, and it, it, there is, the, the thing that I'll say that's that's different about this team, I think, is the fact that they, they, they really trust one another, and they really bought into what Carlos Mendoza was saying when they were celebrating, that, hell, everybody had us dead, we were sellers, and you came back, you proved everybody wrong, and they just... You could just tell, like, communication in the outfield between outfielders. You know, there's never any, like, collision. One guy peels off right away. When they get up there and they, they have a meeting on the mound, they're all they're all hugging each other. It just there seems like there's this, this special feel with this team. They trust each other so much. But, you know, it really, none of that could, could matter. But I will say that the really good thing that makes you excited about what could happen with them, and they still could lose this series, is there's many examples of teams that did not have the best regular season record winning a World Series, getting to a World Series, slaying Dragons. I mean, you go back last year, the Arizona Diamondbacks. You go back to the Philadelphia Phillies two years ago. You go back to even the team that beat the Mets in 2006, the Cardinals. I think they were 82 and, and, and 80 that year. You know, so there's so many examples of, of that. I mean, if you just said Winker and Martinez... And a Winker triple was awesome. I mean, when you just say those two guys, where yeah. have they been? Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, you know, and they showed up yesterday, and maybe they showed up yesterday because maybe everybody else was exhausted. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what the situation. I don't know why it is what it is. But when that ball goes into the right field corner and it's caroming around down there, and it's you know they're flubbing around. I mean, and and runs are scoring, and he goes to third. It's like. You could just see that now all of a sudden everybody's got a little bit of skin in the game. Well, yeah, and also uh, that was that was your big uh, take with Presses or Chua, skin in the game. That, yeah, you well, wanted that skin hey, in the hey, game. Hey, 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 hey. Get that skin. There is, yeah, see? There's, there's Precious or Chua's <laughs> card right there, baby. It's not going to leave me. He's right here with me. We got him. We kept him. He's, He's still happy. there. Yes. Um, so, and, of course, you mentioned the Winker triple, which leads to this back and forth with Willie Adamas of the Milwaukee Brewers and – it's funny if you haven't seen the John Boy breakdown, you got to watch the John Boy breakdown. And I, I don't know what was the impetus for Winker rounding second and screaming expletives. I don't know if he, him and Adamus don't get along. I don't know if it was just one of those like outbursts because he was so happy about his hit, but Adamus takes exception to it. They go back and forth. Uh, you know, Winker, what are you going to do? Adamus, meet me in the parking lot. You know, F you, mother effer, all this. Well, you stuff. know, it's funny. They were yeah, they were interviewing Christian Yelich in between yeah, innings, yeah. and Christian said, "Hey, you know, I don't need to get in the middle of that. You saw what happened." Right, 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 exactly. So there, there's got to be some sort of personal beef between those two, maybe from when they were previous teammates. Yeah, who but, knows? And, and and apparently, you know, all the the Mets beat writers are tweeting that that they they hate Winker there in Milwaukee, like we hated him when he was not a Met. So they were booing him and getting all over him. So why does everybody hate Winker? Well, because he's one Winker's of those dude. You know, he looks at, like just like you know normal why? dude. Well, he's but he because he's an agitator. He's like he's he's one of those classic. You hate him when he's on somebody else's team. You love him when he's on your team. He's like you know he's like Sean Avery. So, so yeah, I was gonna say he's our Sean Avery in yeah. a baseball uniform. Right, and he was well, like that's that. kind of guy you want. Don't you want a guy with edge? I never said I didn't want a guy with edge. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it reminds me of our softball team. I, I would say that, you know, we were really buttoned up, and normally we would play very fundamental softball. But we always had that. We had Kirsch. Remember the guy Kirsch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry's buddy, the comedian. Mm -hmm. That guy was running all over the place like a freaking Tasmanian devil. Yeah. He was, he was our Jesse Winker. Yeah. You remember the softball team better than you remember your NFL career. I know, because I was a little bit more in charge. <laughs> You know, in, in, in my NFL career, I had to worry about just, you know, I had to worry about playing quarterback first. Yeah. But in softball, I had to really, truly, like, take ownership and stock 
in the roster and who was playing and where they were playing and how they were playing and whether or not I needed to have a one-eye conversation with somebody. Yeah, and and I know I, I this is just... Probably common. I wore two or three different hats with that. Sure, certainly. And and I know what you're going to say, and I said it yesterday, and I'm, I am not looking ahead or past. I'm just stating the fact that how much fun it would be to have a Mets, Phillies, and LDS. How much fun. How, I'm not saying they're done. I'm not saying it's happening. I know they got to win another game. Um, but poof, that would be a lot of fun. I'd be disappointed if they didn't get to that point. And I know how good the Phillies have been and the Mets would be big underdogs. I don't care. I want, I want a, I want a piece of that. That's what I want. But one pitch, one inning, one at bat, one game at a time. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'm not even going to respond to that. <laughs> Hey, man, I just, I'm not what are you supposed to do? I'm not responding. Not get excited, not look ahead, not be, not be positive about it. I am. I'm excited about looking ahead to today's game. Yeah. Okay. I know. I mean, just keep it simple. You don't, you don't don't have to complicate things. I'm not complicating things. Just keep it simple. I mean, if you, if you, if you listen, I'm not complicating things. It's not complicated to me. I'm just saying the winner of this series plays the Philadelphia Phillies. We know what goes on. All right. Exactly. I'm, I'm saying from a Mets perspective, give me some of that. Did you see the Brewers manager talking about his starting pitcher? Uh, yes, and and taking him out. And, yes. And, yeah, he had no idea what was going on. I mean, he sounded like a politician that got boxed in about Tiananmen Square. Yeah, he kind of did, yes. <laughs> That's what it yeah. like. Oh, just a knucklehead. <laughs> I mean, that didn't it? I mean, he was right. Pat Murphy, who is well respected and in I the love game. Pat Murphy. I told you I interviewed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love I love the guy. I love his story. And I love he's a he's a baseball guy through and through. He's like a Don Zimmer. He's like a Terry Collins. He's that type of guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I agree. And, you know, it was the questions were asked and and he he basically he didn't seem like he had a understanding of where his starting pitcher was in the game when he was was taken out and it it cost him so i i that that's their problem now and to figure it out and they got you know the brewers have had a history of bowing out early in the playoffs it's one of those things you talk about about a tension of a fan base in a building you know that's going to be there today in Milwaukee like here we go again another one of these situations where we feel like we have this great team you know they have the t-shirts undaunted and you know we're different we're going to play the game this the way average joes yeah the average joes and yeah. the the patches of hulahan and all this stuff could be whoosh, evaporated in two games well, and and you're going to feel that in that building today. And the, and the Mets have to go in there and they got to take control and they got to use that tension that's out there in Milwaukee to their advantage. Yes. Well, I, I, uh, I hope so, but it's like, uh, you're only as good as your next day's pitcher. <laughs> and I think we've got a good pitcher on the mound. Well, yeah. I mean, a guy who, if I could throw anybody out there, he would be the guy. Well, on David this, Peterson. Yeah. I still think I'd say Manaya. Uh, oh. Peter, Peterson's right there, and he was awesome the yeah, other day. Peterson's been great all year. I mean, there's there's, there's not a wrong answer there, but okay, but, but, but that's a good problem to have. Certainly, certainly a good, good problem. problem to have. Yeah, but, lots of decisions. Yeah, man, I tell you, and uh, to 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 be down two nothing after all that travel, and then just come roaring right back. That to me was the most impressive thing at at anything. Well, for, uh, getting and getting contributions from guys we haven't seen give consistent contributions over the last month yep that's right that's the key that's the playoff thing that's the thing that they keep talking about it's a new season it's a it's a new beginning it's a new way of doing things and if they're not going to pit pitch the pete alonzo and he's not going to be fishing and he's just going to go to first base and that's that's the game that's that's what you have to do you know maybe he gets one pitch at, at bat to maybe drive or whatever yeah but if you just just get on base and just keep passing it along that that is the unselfish thing to do. That's the way to get on base. That's the way to play as a team and don't be selfish. And you know that was what I took out of yesterday's game, which was really uh, was a nice thing to see because um, you know I didn't know I, like everybody else I had no idea what to expect. Yeah. So the game one against the Phillies would also be Saturday. So the Yankees also play Saturday, and game one against the Phillies is also Saturday. Be a big Saturday, you know. Well, I'm not worried about Saturday. Okay. I mean, it's really 
I'm worried about Wednesday. Today's October 2nd. Yep. It's Wednesday. You and I personally have a big day. Oh, I'm very excited. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I don't need you talking about anything other than Wednesday. Okay. It's Wednesday. You got it. Now, the next game is tonight. <laughs>